Hi, this is Coach Mike Esol. Welcome to the Esol Podcast. This is the very first episode, guys. You can't imagine how excited I am to have this framework to discuss ESL issues widely. Wow. I'm so appreciative of your continued support. Thank you guys for sticking around. You matter. Let's get the ball rolling. This is going to be an attempt to answer an essential question. The following. How to make progress in learning English? Well, I believe we've all got to a point where we really needed a drastic change in our English learning journey. Sometimes it even feels as if you're not making enough progress to reach your goals. So what is really happening here and what do you need to do? What are the different factors and parameters that come into play? That is what we are addressing today. The very thing that I will always mention when it comes to English learning is motivation. That's the key ingredient of the recipe. This is what will fuel you along the way. You want to make sure you are motivated enough beyond the simple desire of taking a first step. You want to be motivated and determined to get there. If that is not fixed, if you don't deal with that, you're definitely not going to make it. So, motivation is the key. But let's brush that aside and consider the different steps as such that you want to take as you get started and once you are motivated as a matter of fact. The first thing to consider is setting a goal. That's where everything starts. Now, in this context, I want us to draw on the smart target theory developed in 1981 by George Doran and two others. So, this is a very common concept in business management. I suppose you are familiar with it. SMART standing for specific, measurable, achievable or attainable, relevant or realistic, and time-bound or timely. Being specific, learning English refers to the fact of considering some specific skills that could be English speaking. Even in the English speaking context, it could be a specific aspect, for instance, vocabulary, pronunciation, anything specific is okay here. Now you want to consider your current level as well. So you want to take a level test and then from there, you will decide whether you want to move from B1 to B2, for instance, or from A1, from A0, whatever it is, to another level. That's what being specific refers to here. Now, measurable. You want to be able to track your progress. And in order to track your progress, you need to design exactly a pattern. So maybe what you want to consider in this sense is a clear sentence that you have in mind. Okay, as I got started in this journey, I want to be able to hold the conversation in English for more than 10 minutes. This is how you can measure your progress. Being able to achieve something concrete over time. And then the next step is making it achievable and attainable. Now, it is true that the goal needs to be challenging, but also achievable. It shouldn't be too difficult or unrealistic. It should be something that you can reach with hard work and dedication. If you are below the intermediate level, you're not going to set as a goal speaking like a native CNN reporter in three months. That is not a realistic goal for you. And then you want to make it relevant. In this context, you want to make sure that your goal is aligned with your interests and needs. It could be for professional reasons, 
For some people it could be just for fun, but then you want to have a concrete reason that makes it relevant for you to get started in this journey. That is very key. And time bound, you want to set it in a specific time frame. So you set a deadline for achieving this goal. That will help you stay motivated and focused along the way. Remember, time management is also everything. So on a daily basis, you want to make sure that your time is dedicated to English in addition to anything else, any other priority that you have as part of your days. And that leads us to the next point. Number two, you want to practice regularly. Consistency is everything. You've probably heard me saying that all the time. Consistency is everything. So you want to come up with a learning, a practice routine whereby you will be able to dedicate a specific amount of time a day to English. That could be at least 30 minutes or one hour. It's up to you. People are generally active up to 15, 16 or 17 hours a day. So you want to make sure that at the end of the day, you have dedicated some time to English learning and practice. There's a lot of things that we will get to talk about. I don't want to keep this one long. It is just going to be an introductory episode. So let's just keep it this way and we will probably get to go in depth over time. Number three, you want to immerse yourself in the language. It is very important to be surrounded with English as much as possible. And it is possible even in a non-English speaking country. As I always say, it's the mindset thing. If you think right and you do right, you will be able to make it. This is the result of a chain of actions that starts from motivation itself. If you are motivated enough, you will be able to put things together and to be in touch with some people and, you know, get some materials that will enable you to immerse yourself in the language. That is possible. So you don't need to travel. If you can travel, that is fine. Perfect. But that is not a prerequisite for you to make it. Number four, you want to get feedback. It is important for you to get a feedback on your English skills to know where you need to improve. And that is why you definitely need an English coach. You need this feedback from a teacher, a tutor, but it can also be a language exchange partner. So any will do, but especially a teacher is what will definitely help you make it. Don't forget it. You need expertise in the process. When it comes to acquiring knowledge, we always need somebody else's expertise. So that is key regardless of which level you have reached. At the end of the day, that will help you identify your weaknesses and provide suggestions for improvement. Now, last but not least, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I'll even say embrace your mistakes as every single mistake you will make in the process is one more step towards your goal. You want to make mistakes. Mistakes are the best teachers. It's okay to make mistakes, be it in public, be it when you are discussing with another conversation partner. Even when you are in a formal context, you can make mistakes. That is not a big deal. I don't think an interviewer or whoever it can be will be so focused on the perfection of your sentences rather than your ability to communicate in the language. I think the very goal and the very challenge here is to be able to communicate and express ideas in English as a non-native speaker. There is no big deal if you make mistakes, even though, of course, you want to minimize mistakes. But then it is important for you to demystify the notion of mistake. It is not harmful, but helpful. So the problem itself is not mistakes, but the attitude you have toward mistakes. That's the real deal. Like they say, failure is a better teacher than success. Word up. So this is it. 
that's all it takes, basically. Remember the five points here. First, setting a goal. Second, practicing regularly. Third, immersing yourself in the language. Fourth, getting feedback. And the fifth one, very essential, don't be afraid to make mistakes. When you have all these things together, you will definitely make it. This is Coach Mike ESL. It's always a pleasure to have you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and share the link so that the maximum people can benefit from this podcast. Thanks. See you then. We gotta talk about I'm like, wow, she wanna throw a light Cause early in the morning I was there when I don't know why Demystifier en anglais